From 1960s to the 1990s, DEC or Digital Equipment Corporation was a major American company in the computer industry. Space Wars, known for being the first computer game, was made for DEC's PDP computer in 1962. It's not actually the first computer game though. DEC does not exist anymore. But I have been able to get a hold of one computer made by DEC. It's the digital DEC Station 320. And it's a beautiful old 386. I love the design of this computer with all the details. Those symbols look great. It even has a volume slider. I also like this air intake at the bottom. And above that power button there. And perhaps you think this computer looks familiar to another computer made by a different company? Because this is not really made by DEC. DEC built computers, but not IBM clones. They were made by Tandy for the American market, or Olivetti for the European market. And this computer was made by Olivetti. I have been trying to get a hold of an Olivetti just because I remembered that brand from when I was a kid. And I was missing a 386 in my collection, so this is great. Now let's take a closer look inside this machine and try to boot it up. Okay, so to open this computer, we can simply remove or unscrew these thumb screws. That's nice. And push in here. So you see I have already opened this computer before and then the sticker on this chip fell off and I had to put uh, some tape over it because there's a light sensitive spot here and if too much light gets in here then the information will be erased. But yeah, this is a old network card. We have some RAM as you can see, and here I guess is the CPU. So here you can see it says 385SX, but it must be a regular 386SX, 20 MHz. It would be nicer with the DX, but I'll take it. This machine wasn't so expensive, so yeah. I can't complain. I'm not sure how much RAM is in here. But also, I can see the FPU uh, slot here from Math Co Processor. I'm pretty sure, sure of. And is this is this PC chips? I think it is. Yeah, and here you can see it has a 120 megabyte hard drive from Connor. And you can see uh, here it says Olivetti, and it seems to be from 92. Also, this is the battery that was in this computer. I have already removed it. It was under under here, and it is a six volt. A uh, non rechargeable battery. So I'm going to replace it uh, with this one. I have soldered this on and used some hot glue to use as insulation. Uh, insulation, right? And also took the um, what is this called again? Um, <laughs> I don't remember. 
but I use some hot glue and attached it and so yeah. It seems there's room for five and a quarter inch uh, floppy drive or a CD-ROM, but there is no standard standard way of attaching it. Okay, now then. It works, which I already knew it did. Extended, was that? Memory, it says base unit system error. What is base unit system? Okay. One. I have tried to configure the BIOS and the hard drive here. But I can't get the hard drive to work. So... Yes, it's uh, 120 megabytes, but I think the closest thing I can get... If I select 40, because it said 40 first on the hard drive. And it says... 116 megabytes, so maybe 116 megabytes is usable for me. I have to select... Um, tab, then enter to confirm. And it's... Why is the battery blinking? It says fixed disk not present. Okay, that's not a good sound. But I have tested the hard drive in a different computer and it works. Now the BIOS settings should be saved. If I enter the BIOS, then it's not. Yeah, it's not saved. Why? It's a 6 volt battery. Could I have plugged it the wrong way in? I remember specifically that the red was towards the power supply. The plus polarity. I need to double check. And here is the cable. If I turn it the other way, it shouldn't work. I, I, I can't even plug it in. Let's first check that the polarity is correct and that it gives voltage. Yeah, all is fine. Let's try to type in some dates here and time. And then there is no save option, there's only escape. Fix disk not present. I don't know how to enter setup. I tried F1, F2, delete. I tried. Uh, Control Shift Alt Delete or something. Control Shift Delete. So let's turn off. Sounds really weird. It enters bias by default and still blinking on the battery. So here's the datasheet for the 
BIOS chip and VPP is the programming voltage that should be well, it should be uh, 12 volts apparently and VCC and the supply voltage should be 6 volts that's on um, VPP is pin 1 and pin 32 on the opposite side is VCC the supply voltage and I don't know if the supply voltage is supposed to come from the battery is the information that I am trying to make in the BIOS is that same on the chip I'm not sure but I'm going to try to measure the voltage now on pin 32 it's supposed to be 6 volts so I'm guessing that um, it should be from the battery and then okay nothing let's um, turn on the machine this should be 12 volts now now this is 6 volts. Um, okay. Okay. Well, I get some power at least. So I have removed the motherboard. And here's the BIOS. If you look at the other side, I can't see any problems. It looks fine. If you look at this motherboard, it says here uh, BA289. Uh, and uh, this seems to be the same as Olivetti M310 because here you can see I hope um, BA289 and if we scroll down to user diskette solves set the problems Correct some errors in the message system. Solves hard disk test malfunctioning. And there is also a system test. Um, I think this. I need to, need to try to find this user diskette. So I have connected the hard drive to this Windows 95 PC. And here you can see. CMOS text. If I open this up, it says saving the computer's configuration, hard disk types, saving CMOS data. So it seems like this is a part of some files for setting up the BIOS. And there are some files here, IBM bio.com IBM DOS install so I'll try to copy some files over to a diskette a system diskette so I'm going to try to boot up the computer with this diskette and try to run the installation file and see what happens because I could not find the user diskette for uh, the M310 computer. Let's try and install. Okay. But where is IBM?
I had IBM Bio.exe here. Okay, so I made the system disk for M310. Oh no, uh, 315. So I'm not sure if that's wise. Perhaps it's going to configure everything wrong, but maybe it won't work at all. Machine not supported. Ah. So I am trying out a new setup disk that someone at, at uh, Vogans found for me. Copy disk not present. Oh. And nothing happens. It was a system disk for uh, 320, but it might have been the old one, not the or not the European model. Well, it doesn't work. Okay, so now I am following the trace here, trying to. This is the plus, and it's connected here, and then it goes under this, um, what looks like hot glue, but then it does not connect to here, yeah, so I'm just going to continue to find out where it ends. Well, I try to follow the trace from the positive lead. But I could not see, I could not follow the trace because there's perhaps it is in the middle that there's a middle layer of uh, traces here. At least I could not easily f follow the lead. And I also learned that the BIOS does not save the information, it's in a different chip. A different uh, RAM chip, perhaps SRAM chip, perhaps. This chip here is like an SRAM, I think. I can zoom in on that chip. So, do you think this could be where the CMOS is saved? Because on the I've looked up the datasheet and on the VCC pin, uh, there is no voltage from the battery, or is there a different chip that is the CMOS RAM? Because if I know which chip is the CMOS RAM, then I can see if it gets power from the battery or not. Is, is this the RAM for the CMOS, or I don't know. So I have tried several setup disks, none of them are working. I think the setup disk for the 320, that was for the older 320 um, computer. Because I saw that the disk was created in 1989. And uh, that I think is from an older model. I had overlooked this picture here. Uh, this is a picture of the motherboard. And here it says DRAM, 2 megabytes of DRAM. And I thought, could that be the CMOS RAM? So I googled the chip. And that was the same. <laughs> And here it says CMOS Dynamic RAM. So I'm going to see if I can get some 
voltage on VSS pin there. Nothing. I'm just going to check all the pins here. Because why not? Tiny bit of voltage there. Zero point zero two volts. Oh yeah, that was. It's this pin, I think. But how much voltage is it? Is it supposed to have plus five volts? So, I guess I can try to follow the trace and see if I can find some common broken thing. So here is the um, pin, VCC pin, oh. yeah, yeah, and where is the RAM, um, or I mean um, there, but where, you see it's in the middle. In between the two layers. Looks like there's... It looks like I can see the trace. It's a little bit lighter green, but I don't know. Uh, where was I? Maybe I can just we'll start from the other side. What are these two things here? This? It's um DC DOC four three one set A I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a crystal. I'm guessing it's a crystal. Some clock thingy. It's connected directly to Power input. Are these Small things here broken. These small things here are they supposed to like select whether to use the power from the battery or the main power or okay. I connected the main I connected the battery power here. And here, so here I have like, come on, six point three on the other side, five point nine six. Five point five. What do I do now? <laughs> I'm going to end the video now. Thank you to everyone that has tried to help me out on Retro Machines and Wogans and Arthur from the Olivetti website. You know who you are. <laughs> Arthur sent me a new file. A user diskette for the European version of this Dextation, Dextation uh, 320. So let's see.
Okay, I'll just hold it in then. Hey! English. Let's just go to setup. Invalid date. Data time configuration. Hard disk initialization error. Configuration error. CMOS battery low. Okay. Clicked firmware, but then it just froze. Let's try again. Let's try set configuration. Change. Floppy drive one data error, but it's working fine. Not present. No, not present. Um, F7, change X. Standard CMOS data. Uh, that would mean save, I guess. Or. Okay. I guess I can just press escape. This copies the current configuration in CMOS memory to the backup configuration file CMOS dot dot. Okay. Um. What will happen now? Base unit system pass. Present. Now it doesn't say any that there is a problem with the battery, but I think there still is a problem, but F two. No, no, not the mustache. No, no. Or not this. Arthur, you did it! I love you! <laughs> and men have done so many things. But there might still might be a problem, of course, at the CMOS won't be uh, saved. But it's working. And my thumb hurts. Ah. Yes. 
Okay, I need to turn off the PC. But now let's see what happens when I turn on the PC again. It doesn't complain about the battery, but but you can see the date is missing. Uh, but it's actually still working. I can boot the PC. Ugh. Now I need to do some other things uh, like cleaning uh, it up a bit, the rust, and also uh, replacing the switch and the power supply. Here is the switch that is not working. It just pops out. So I'm going to end the video right now and I'm going to fix this switch in uh, part 2. Either repair the switch or replace it. And also in part 2 I'm going to install a sound card, uh, test out some games and of course clean up the rust in the computer. But thanks again to everyone and especially to Arthur for finding that file that made this computer work again. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.